She's a movie star. It's got a smoke system. We had a gear problem. Hello and welcome to the Tora 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 T60 video. In this video today, I promise you three things. First, we're gonna walk through all the flights I did in the airplane. That's first, the functional check flight that turned into the flight with the gear problem. That's second, the actual test flight where we looked at the handling qualities between this T modified T60 Tora 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 uh, monster and a stock T6, coupled with some light acro and a smoke system check. And then the third flight, which was the ferry flight from Eagle's Nest over to Nut Tree. Secondly, I promised two montages with fun music for those of us that are into it. And three, I promise a detailed description of all the modifications that were done to this G model Harvard Form uh, T6 to make it into a zero for the movie Tora Tora Tora. that I've ever flown the center line. So my first flight in 7754 uh, was uh, sort of two parts. First was an FCF. The Sanders, uh, Dennis Sanders and Joel Swagger had helped Jason overhaul the propeller and get that installed. They'd done some ground runs and taxi stuff. Uh, and so uh, this was going to be the first flight on those new parts. It was also the first flight uh, with the airplane owned by Jason. He had the airplane ferried out to Sanders. Uh, but this was sort of the first time it was flown by uh, someone in his circle. Uh, and then he wanted some feedback on how the airplane handled, uh, both, I think, general, like, safety stuff, because there's sort of lots of modifications to the airplane. He wanted to know if there's anything he needed to be nervous about about flying it. And then uh, sort of uh, um, handling qualities differences that may come from uh, the modifications. Uh, so I had planned to, uh, you know, normal takeoff, climb up to above uh, bailout altitude, do some lateral directional stuff, do some roll rate checks, uh, do some stalls, and then um, uh, bring the airplane back in, uh, shoot a couple takeoffs and landings, make sure all that stuff was good. You know, Dennis's old rule of thumb that if you're going to break, you want to break at home where you got lots of spares. Uh, make sure that all that stuff is working as expected. And then either shut down then or uh, go direct. But uh, the next move would be to move the airplane to Nut Tree, uh, where Jason had a hangar set up for the airplane. Uh, the hydraulic issues or the landing gear issues that we had uh, cut the flight short. Uh, so we ended up uh, landing back at... Uh, at uh, Sanders at Eagle's Nest, uh, and that's here. On the frequency. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. 
Uh, it looks like we got a generator problem. Not coming online? Yeah, it's just holding right at 24 and a half volts. Generator is switched on and I'm looking for circuit breakers. We're on our way out. Copy on. So Jason came down to the run-up area and climbed up on the wing and we talked it through. The question was, do you want to have, uh, if there's a major electrical issue, you want to be at Sanders. But if it's just an adjustment of the generator, then you can do that uh, deployed at Nuttree. So the question was, do the FCF, but do we go back to uh, Sanders or do we go to Nuttree? Uh, do we shut down now and adjust it now? And uh, anyway, that was the discussion. We decided to go. So with that decision made, Jason jumped to the golf cart, went back down to the uh, Sanders hangar and... Uh, I finished the run-up and got ready to go. Any phase of flight where you notice the geared 1340, it's the takeoff. Any luck? Voltage went up after takeoff, but uh, still only showing 26. Unsafe go out, and the ammeter show anything? Gone from discharge to charge, but uh, yeah, system voltage is only 26. We'll give it a minute to see if it comes up. Yeah, if it ain't done it by now, that, it won't do it. We need to adjust it or carry on. So uh, I'll fly the card, plan on coming back to Eagle's Nest. If it feels good to you, you can take it on over and adjust it over there. It's only a volt and a half low. Uh, got it. So we'll plan on going direct. Okie dokie. Thanks. Thank you. All right, coming up on 5,000, we'll start with the clean stalls. Light buffed on that one, 55. So that's uh, 10 knots roughly slower stall speed than a stock T6 with those longer wing tips, but you can see the characteristics are the same with that characteristic right wing drop of a T6. And then here's the G model manual for comparison. Those speeds are in miles per hour. Okay, here comes the gear. Roger that. And first dirty stall coming. Roger that. So here we punch in on the airspeed indicator. You'll see it drop off the scale. So the uh, the bottom mark there is uh, 50 knots. So uh, roughly uh, couples with what we're seeing clean, roughly 10 knots slower uh, than published. Again, jump to the outside. You'll see the same characteristic right wing drop of a stock T6. And then back again to the G model manual. There you see the speed power off, gear and flaps down in miles per hour. A little more pronounced wing drop. Other than that, felt good. So here's the big gear anomaly. You can see I reached over, pull the gear up, and if you look, the two fingers, a punch in, are mismatched. So you see the left gear is up and the right gear is still down. Also, while I've got it in freeze frame here, you can see the hydraulic gauge there just above the mag switches shows there is pressure in the system. To the outside, you're going to watch that right gear doesn't appear to move at all. So here it comes. See the left gear move, but the right gear didn't budge, which makes me think that the down lock on the right main never released. Okay, cleaned up after the stalls, and the uh, right gear didn't appear to come up. Can you guys see it from where you're at? We'll get the glasses out and look. Without airborne chase, I'm sort of guessing in the cockpit as to what's going on. I know that the uh, gear position levers show that the right gear is down, the left gear is up. The locks indicate that the neither gear is locked down. Uh, I have hydraulic pressure, but I'm trying to figure out what, what to believe and what not to believe. So uh, calling down to the ground to try to get their eyes on the situation is uh, the next best thing. Turn your right a little bit so we can see it. Yes, they see one hanging. So the uh, levers in the up position uh, I can't see the uh, mechanical lock, but it appears that the gear is not that far down, and I don't have a light. Okay, uh, about halfway. All right, I'm going to continue the descent, and we'll do uh, overhead at 500 feet. Give me any information before I start moving levers. Okay, Doc, we'll call. So this is a little spooky, right? So we're going to be down near the ground at low power settings, not going fast with 
in an unlandable configuration with one gear down and one gear up. So opening the canopy is a little bit of insurance so I'll be able to get out if something happens. Okay, I'm on uh, final now. No intention of landing. Any information on the gear would help. Welcome fly. Right is full down, the left hanging. Okay, I'm going to select gear down now. Okay, the left gear over, the left one come down, they're both down. Okay, I got fingers and lights and locks. You're going to leave them there and come home? That sounds like a plan to me. Okay, thanks. Hydraulic pressure seems to be okay. It does. Yeah, thanks. And we're base with the gear. Roger, I see nothing around you. So if you look there, uh, right there, that guy in the white shirt, that's Ben walking up with chocks. Real convenient that uh, this happened on a Sunday when Ben was at the airport. He's currently in the middle of a T6 uh, restoration. He's been spending a lot of time over the last couple months on hydraulic. So he's sort of the uh, resident uh, expert, or at least the most proficient of the group on uh, uh, T6 hydraulics. And uh, he happened to not only be on the ground during the flight, but now he's available to kind of look the thing over. So. Uh, he climbed up on the wing uh, and started checking the, uh, the hydraulic uh, cylinders that are right behind uh, sort of your left arm or uh, elbow in the, uh, in the pilot seat of the, uh, the T6G. Uh, checked the reservoir, make sure it had fluid in it, make sure there wasn't a big pile of fluid somewhere or something obviously broken. And uh, sort of the story of this anomaly in big pictures, there wasn't much to find. Everything looked normal and we were never able to recreate uh, the problem on the ground. Okay, uh, differences with the zero mods to the uh, T6. First, the experimental in the cockpit, which kind of gets me stoked. Here's the cockpit itself. Looks like mostly T6 stuff, uh, but directly of interest is this uh, hydraulic uh, panel here. So the gear handle's the same, the flat panel's the same, wobble pump trim as a stock T6. There's the extended wing tips, about a foot longer than stock, all fiberglass. For comparison, I have the uh, stock T6 uh, wing tips here so you can see just how much longer it is and then here's the uh, gun installation there's a gun in each wing with those lights obviously there are T6's with guns mounted stock in the wings these are not T6 parts this is all custom uh, I never found the switch for those lights but I'm sure you can make them flash for the air show so there's the zero rudder spike extension in the stock T6 wheel mounted in the back of the T6 it had the uh, retractable BT-13 tail wheel, but they took that out. And then here's the stock T6 rudder for comparison. Second biggest area of modification on the airplane is probably the gear area. So the first, the big gear doors on the wheels covers most of the wheel. Here's stock T6 for comparison, just that little spade door on the stock T6. But then that inner gear door area is straight tapered on the Zero Mod with that little fairing in the front. And then for comparison, the stock T6 has that May West, that curvy bit where the wheel would go. The Zero Mod involves uh, dual exhaust. So here on the left side of the airplane is the second exhaust pipe, the added exhaust pipe. Uh, that's a big part of the smoke system, having smoke come out both sides of the airplane. Stock T6 is just this big exhaust on the right side. Notice the crankcase there in the center of the engine. The Zero has that pumpkin thing in the center of the crankcase. That's actually the gearbox. So that's part of the three blade conversion with otter parts. Also notice the uh, chin scoop, uh, that was part of the modification as well. In the cockpit, those are the mag switches, those guarded toggles there, bottom left. And then you see that rotary switch is stock, so that's sort of a big thing you notice is the switch from rotary switch to toggles. The gun pack on the top of the fuselage is bigger than that which would be on a T6, but you don't notice that so much as the differences in the canopy. So here's the stock T6 and stock canopy, you see the gun pack is there. But notice the extra bar in the zero canopy and then that extra transparency on the top. That's what you really notice. Then, of course, the uh, missing back seat. Flight controls are in there. They're just covered up with that flat shelf. And then the stock T6, uh, the two canopies, obviously. So the only changes we made in the system between flight one and flight two was we put the airplane up on jacks and we cycled the gear a whole bunch manually. 
uh, just pumping the gear up and down. We lubed a bunch of the connections and stuff and the linkages and stuff for the ups and up and down locks. And we uh, inspected all of the hydraulic fittings for the uh, retraction and extension uh, systems, uh, but couldn't find anything wrong with it. So uh, the only real change that we made uh, was adding fluid. You saw in the video for flight one that Ben checked the fluid and there was plenty of fluid, uh, but uh, we found we could add a little bit more and sort of scratching our head trying to come up with something to do. We added a little bit more fluid and step for flight two. So the plan for flight two was for the most part to finish uh, what we hadn't got done on flight one. Uh, so assuming the gear came up as expected, uh, we would uh, climb to altitude uh, and skip the stalls since we'd done those on flight one and move right to the lateral directional stuff. Uh, look at how the uh, lateral directional uh, behavior was affected by the longer wings. Then we were going to uh, look at Dutch roll damping, uh, then a roll rate check. Uh, then some uh, loops and rolls. The owner wanted to see how the airplane maneuvered. Uh, then we were going to end the day with a banana pass uh, checking the smoke system uh, and then uh, our normal, a single normal landing. <laughs> Yeah, they've come up pretty much together. Did the bolts come up? 26.6. There's 4,000, we'll level here. Roger that, thank you. So as part of the evaluation of the Zero mod, I wanted to look at the effect of the wingtips, specifically on handling quality. So here we are checking uh, the hydro effect. So put in a bunch of rudder and see if there's a roll response. After that, we did uh, Dutch roll damping. So that is, if you do a, a singlet uh, on the rudder, uh, how long does it take for the uh, Dutch roll to damp out? That's the lateral directional oscillation that comes after you do a singlet. Um, both of that was pretty much what we expected with the stock T6. The other question was roll rate. So uh, the, there was a rumor that the roll rate was slower uh, for a given speed and deflection. Uh, without a good baseline comparison, we were just getting data that we could later compare. Uh, but uh, that was uh, the purpose of those. Then we went on to uh, full deflection rolls with 150 knot uh, entry speed. These are sort of barrels to keep things positive G, but again, something we could uh, use as comparison should we be able to get stock baseline data for comparison. I'm not a T6 expert, but uh, it's my observation that there were no changes uh, in any of these categories with the mod.
Roger that. So the last thing uh, Jason wanted checked was the smoke system. So I, I took advantage of the aerobatic box at Eagle's Nest and set up for a banana pass. Smoke's on. Worked out that there was just enough smoke for one pass, just enough to prove that the system worked. You can see it's a little uh, patchy. Most likely that was just the system running out of oil. Oh, I got him. All locked and down. Base with the gear. Thank you. So here's my second landing in the airplane. Uh, with that middle board missing from the flaps, uh, there's less drag from the flaps, but then that big three-bladed propeller creates more drag when you saw it off. So uh, whether that's the reason or not, I'm not sure, but I had trouble getting all the way to three-point attitude on the first two landings. That tail high, it's pretty easy to skip it. So you can see I'm kind of skipping the landing there. But uh, no big bounces or anything crazy. Just not quite as well as uh, I'd like to have done. So with the functional check flight complete and the evaluation done, all that was left was to move the airplane to Nut Tree. Uh, it was a nice flight over to Nut Tree, and you can see that here. Uh, A few moments later.